This week we're bringing you all of the sights and sounds of the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker red carpet. It's blue. Thank you for reminding me of my inability to memorize colors, Andrea. This is the Star Wars Show. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Show, the only Star Wars show coming to you from the place where the Rise of Skywalker blue carpet was held. It was a lot prettier on Monday night than it is now. We were a lot prettier on Monday night too. And now the news. Enough already. I have such a headache. If you can't get enough of that Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker hype, then you'll want to jump into Battlefront 2 because there is a brand new update waiting for you. EA has released a brand new trailer showing off all the new characters and locations you can find in the latest update. For more information, check out Battlefront2.com. And for more breaking Star Wars news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com slash SWS. Hello and welcome everybody to the Rise of Skywalker world premiere, Blue Carpet. We are so excited to get to hang out with you all night long, surrounded by the best fans in the galaxy. The energy here has absolutely been amazing. <laughs> the fans are the best and I can't thank them enough because of their passion, their support. This is the social stage where I'll be featuring your reactions, videos, and answers to our interactive polls, as well as talk to some of the celebrity super fans and filmmakers that make their way down the Blue Carpet. It was very exciting then it's very exciting now. It's a thrill every time. I'm enjoying myself now. I'm no concern. I've just turned up tonight to see if I'm in this one. There were some hits. There were some hints. Yeah, JJ dropped a few. Is this a live stream? It's the live stream. Hi, Mom. Yeah. Hi, Dad. The only thing that's better than making Star Wars is watching Star Wars, so that's what I'm here to do tonight. This is so cool to see the end of the Skywalker saga. It's an honor to be here. I could not be more excited. I mean, this is the biggest of the biggest of the biggest. So much anticipation. You kicked off a new era of Star Wars. How does it feel to have finally finished it up and actually be going into a theater to see it now. I feel lucky to be part of it and I cannot wait for the movie to finally get out there. We've been working on it for a long time. We've had such an incredible time. It's just flown by these five years in doing these three movies. I am very, very excited yeah. because, yeah, I'm here and this is a beautiful venue and everybody's going to see a staggering film. It feels great. It feels great that we're finally releasing the beast unto the public. I'm proud of the work that everyone did in the film, but I'm most proud of this cast. They are just an extraordinary group. This is a Last one. I'm coming on stage when it's not my turn. It's the end of school. Four years ago, freshman John never would have done that. Fresh John wouldn't have done any of this. I've changed. Were you actually allowed to like make the pew pew sounds when you were firing blasters? I've actually been told in movies, and we can see your mouth making it. We don't know much about General Pride. No, just mean and evil, incarnate. Never smile once. I'm in it a little bit. Blink and you'll miss me is the name of my character. I'm very excited. Not a lot of people recognize me. To people, I'm either, oh, that guy must play basketball, or that guy Chewbacca. How you doing, Tran? You loose? You feeling good? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm loose? Sorry. I'm feeling Yes! They do not respect lines! There is an order to these things! You look yeah. amazing! Is there anything that you would like to say to the fans or to the audience as we go into this final night here? Films like this really matter. Star Wars has mattered to people for 42 years. I think there's a reason it's endured. It just never ceases to amaze me, the enduring quality of these movies. The action is winding down here on the red carpet, which means we need to get inside. And we want to thank all of you fans that participated in the show tonight, as well as everyone out there who watched at home. On behalf of Anthony, David Collins, the entire cast and crew here, thanks for watching the Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker world premiere. And as always, may, may the, the force, force be with you. you. We did it, buddy. Our guest this week was just named Time Magazine's Business Person of the Year with a beautiful oil portrait, Bob Iger. Nice you, thing to wake up to, Yeah, by the way. right? Is that painting, does that physically exist, you with the child? It's the first time I saw it today when I was online. I did not know it was being done. There had been a request for a photograph, which we did not do, and the painting showed up today <laughs> basically in my inbox. Because I'll tell you, if that exists on canvas somewhere, that's something to put above a fireplace, I think. I think you'd have to ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, by the way, about my Christmas card this year, and I was mm -hmm. thinking maybe I should include that painting and say, you know, we had a sixth grandchild this year, the asset <laughs> or the child. The child is just the cherry on top of a really, really huge year for Star Wars. How has this journey felt for you over the last four years? Well, it's been an incredibly fulfilling and a very exciting journey, but actually, I think in many respects, we're just getting started. We've accomplished a lot, obviously, with the saga films, the Skywalker saga, and the opening of Galaxy's here in California.
California and in Florida, and of course, a few other films along the way and TV series. But it just feels like we're just starting to mine the full potential of what Star Wars is and what Star Wars can be. You also released a book this year, The Ride of a Lifetime, and it was an instant bestseller, still on the bestseller list. Thank you. And you do talk in that book about what a fan you are of Star Wars and what a fan you were when this opportunity came up. And it's been wonderful to see Star Wars sort of woven into the fabric of everything Disney is able to do. But I want to talk about Disney Plus. What did you want Disney Plus to be creatively? How does it differ from other platforms that are available? The vision that I had was that Disney, as it had in Walt's day, should embrace technology for a few different reasons. One, use it to make the product and the stories that you tell more compelling to the audience. I can't think of a better example of someone who did that than George Lucas, for instance, using technology to tell a better story. And that's obviously what we saw in 1977 when we got to see the first Star Wars film. The second was, let's use technology to distribute our content to people in not only more effective ways, but more compelling ways for them, more satisfying ways for them. And I think Disney Plus speaks volumes about both of those. The Mandalorian, obviously a great example of that. I want to touch on The Mandalorian, obviously, because it's been such a huge success. What made The Mandalorian the Star Wars project to kick off Disney Plus? Well, first of all, we have great faith in John, both as a storyteller, but also a storyteller like George that knows how to use technology for the good of his stories and the good of the audience that will ultimately hear or see the stories. Dave Filoni and the team at Lucasfilm who are involved in it, the concept of The Mandalorian, the use of the technology, Disney Plus, it all kind of fit together. And obviously the big breakout star of The Mandalorian, let's talk about The Child. When you first saw The Child, did you have an idea that it would be as big a deal with literally everyone? Yes. Did you see that coming? I think it's exceeded our expectations, all of our expectations. But I knew the moment I saw a early cut of the first episode that we had something really special. It doesn't have to say anything, just emotes, just looks, moves the ears, the yeah. eyes, and so darn intriguing. I think people really want to know, what's yeah. its name? What's right. its real name? Do you it's know it. its real name, by the way? I do not. No. I'm not allowed to know anything important, Bob, because you just, uh, I got, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I know, it's real, I, I know it's real name. And it's one of the reasons why I have extra security now, because I don't want to be given some kind of truth serum by right. someone. Right. Star Wars is a lot of keeping these things precious and keeping these things secret to kind of let yeah. the audience open the present for themselves. And we didn't tell anybody about yeah. that character's presence in the series or even the first episode. And I know a lot's been said about the Christmas season and everybody wants to buy the child's mm -hmm. toys and et cetera and so on. And they're not really out there. And that's because if we had given the design out, it would have gone out to hundreds and hundreds of people probably all over the world, and we didn't want to do that. So people will have to wait, which I think actually is a good thing in this case. Star Wars and television, where do you see that in the future? Is that going to be a big component? Yes. I don't look at it as just television. I look at it as an extension of Star Wars storytelling. And what Disney Plus has given us the ability to do is to do just that, is to bring Star Wars to people in new ways and to bring new Star Wars to people. You know, it's not the same place or the same characters. And just look at Mandalorian, while obviously there's a lot shared, there's a lot that's really fresh. And I love that. I love the ability to really be agnostic in terms of what platform it's being made for. And so it could be, you know, down the road that a TV show becomes a movie and a movie becomes a TV series. I'm not making any announcements mm -hmm. here or not, but I think it's important for us. It'd be great to be for us. Agnostic. It'd be great for us if you made like one announcement. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like if you just made one announcement, that'd be amazing. Well, I'll for make us. one. Yeah. <laughs> the baby's name is not George. Okay. Fair. It's not that. Fair. And then finally, The Rise of Skywalker will be releasing in theaters. This is an over 40-year journey in storytelling for Star Wars. Where do you see it going in the next 40 years? What's next? First, we have to tell people what the baby's name is, and then yes. maybe we'll start talking about what's next. The beauty of all of this is that we'll continue to tell stories between now and whatever the next film is. And while we're doing that, we will work to find what makes the most sense to be released as a big screen experience. And there are a number of choices. There are number of discussions. There are a number of very talented people. And that to me is very exciting. In the meantime, fans of Star Wars are being well served, I believe, with The Mandalorian and with what's to come with the prequel to Rogue One and with Obi-Wan and with Clone Wars. Yeah, it's a very exciting time. We're very excited to see what comes next. Thank you so much for sitting down with me, Bob. Pleasure. I really appreciate nice to it. see you. You too. You're watching the Star Wars show. You know, there's always been that one Star Wars toy or piece of memorabilia that for one reason or another, 
always eluded you as a child? Well, we here at the Star Wars Show tried to remedy those Star Wars shaped holes in our hearts with the following segment, paid for by our friends at eBay. When I was a kid, I thought my older cousin Jeremy was the coolest guy in the world. And so everything he loved was something that I immediately loved. And I remember going over to my grandmother's house and seeing his Star Wars juice glasses. So I was like, Star Wars, cool, I have to see Star Wars. I've been a Star Wars fan since I was three years old when I was misbehaving and my parents' friend put on A New Hope to distract me from misbehaving. And ever since then, I've been hooked. I've been a Star Wars fan ever since I was a little kid. I remember distinctly at Christmas getting my first set of action figures from Santa, and it was Chewbacca and R2-D2 from the Power of the Force collection. The only Star Wars toy I ever had was the Kenner speeder bike, and I played with it so much that I broke it, and I wasn't allowed to have any more Star Wars toys. <laughs> but I was obsessed with the Ewok Village playset because I loved Ewoks. The ship that always just blew my mind, I'm sure with every kid growing up as well, was the Millennium Falcon. It was just the coolest looking ship. One year for Christmas, I asked Santa for a Millennium Falcon. I go to the Christmas tree, and we start unwrapping all the gifts. I know there's a really big box, but it wasn't Star Wars. It was Star Trek, and it was the Starship Enterprise. My parents bought my sister a Yoda puppet, and I was actually really creeped out by this when I was a kid because my sister would just make it nod at me silently. And then eventually I grew to really love that character and also the movies, and I always really coveted that puppet. When I was a kid, I didn't really get a lot of toys for some reason, except for Christmas 1978. I, for some reason, was given a Darth Vader 12 inch action figure and at some point during my growing up Vader got lost. It's always something I wish I hadn't let go. My dad was in the army so I grew up moving around on military bases and when I first got into Star Wars we lived in Germany. So when we would go to the store and I would look for Star Wars action figures I would look for Emperor Palpatine because the commercials in Germany were all American commercials so you would still see that this figure was something that you could find but I could never find him and I missed out on the original Emperor action figure because I was not in America at the time. What if we we were to tell you that you now have what? your very own Emperor Palpatine. And he comes with a cane too? All right, that's what makes it special is that his accessory comes with him. What? Do I get to keep this? Of course. Look at how great he looks. See, this is the nodding I was talking about though. What? And he has the cape? That's tough to find. That is amazing. Gosh, he's bigger than I remember. You got this on eBay? And it was still in the box and everything? This is amazing. There's a rock that you could swing at figures. Yes, this is it. This is the tree with the rock. Holy cow. And that's the packaging a little bit. This is incredible. This is mine? It's for you. Oh my goodness. Sorry, mom and dad but you got me the wrong ship 20 years ago, but now I got the right one. Man, can you believe it? Another Star Wars movie is coming out this week, and it's the ultimate episode of the fourth season of the Star Wars show. That's right, but what a way to go out here in the middle of an active construction zone. Nothing but the best. As always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and go see The Rise of Skywalker when it opens in theaters this Friday, December 20th. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Bad Boys of Star Wars out. Oh yeah? I got I got little flappers here, so it's not as smooth. But... Bad boys call things little flappers. I have to take these off because my old man read. eyes can't, can't see with the sunglasses. Dark. I'd love to be the bad boy, man. but I just I can't no, anymore. I'm I'm not aged cool out of enough. it. <sighs>